today I have a fun assignment. I have a beautiful day, I have a little bit of a budget, and I've got the Nissan Z. Sporty, rear wheel drive, manual transmission. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm going on a road trip. Come on, you're coming too. I'm heading up to some of the best roads that Southern California has to offer to test this fun machine on wheels. And we've got a little bit of a highway drive ahead of us. So we have a little time to kill about a history lesson. For those who may not know, Nissan was originally called Datsun for its first three financial backers in Japan before changing the name in 1954 to Nissan after its new owner. That nameplate finally came to the U.S. in 1982. I remember it. It was a very confusing time since my first car was the unremarkable Datsun B210 Notchback. Okay, hey, it wasn't much, but that car meant the world to me. The Fair Lady 240Z first made its appearance in 1970 when, for safety regulatory reasons, Nissan turned this. The two-seat Roadster, which cribbed its looks from British and Italian convertibles of the era to the coupe we know and love as the head-turning 240Z. And Nissan sold a ton of them for a lot of reasons, but one of them was because it had such an affordable price. Speaking of price, if you're looking to buy one of these newbies, then you're looking at about $40,000 for the base price Z Sport. Now it does come with the three liter V6 and that makes about 400 horsepower. So if you're doing the math, like one of my colleagues did, that's about $100 a horse. It's a pretty good deal. If you get the Z Performance, that will tack on a rev matching feature on your manual transmission, a sport tuned suspension, Bridgestone Potenza performance tires, a front chin spoiler, rear spoiler, and some nice interior extras. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This is after all a road trip and I need to relax and enjoy. There's so much traffic for that. For that, we're gonna talk about the cabin for a moment. Yeah, I know you wanna hear about how it drives, but that's for tomorrow when we're on sweepy mountain roads. For now, the interior. Yes, this is a two-seat car, and one might think it would feel a little bit snug uh, for someone bigger than my five foot five average size. But you know what? Even Mike Danger said he felt comfortable in here. Uh, the seats are nice, a little supportive, but still comfortable, even after being on the road for a little bit. And everything that I need to get to, all the controls are really well within arm's reach. Overall, it's a very comfortable ride. When it comes to the electronic interface, this is a vast improvement over the previous 370Z. It is modern in here, hallelujah. An eight inch infotainment display comes standard, but you can upgrade to a nine inch version with navigation. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto come standard, as does satellite radio capability. You can upgrade to a premium Bose audio system to appropriately blast your tunes, your audiobook, or your self-help podcast, confirming how amazing you are while you're driving to your destination. You know what? Being a YouTuber can be hard, but always remember you're good enough and the viewers really do like you, even if they leave weird comments about your hair. I do very much appreciate some of the driver's assistance features in here like blind spot monitoring and lane keeping assist because uh, visibility is not super great. There's a very robust B pillar because sports car. And I love that it's got adaptive cruise control standard even on the manual transmission version so I can relax a little bit more on the drive. But I am always staying alert, especially on a long road trip. Design-wise, there are three vintage-inspired gauges on top of the dash, which I really like. Those are a nice touch. But one of them is allocated for turbo speed, which to me isn't as helpful as, say, knowing oil pressure or temperature. I'd rather that one be used differently. If this is your only car, well, as far as cargo space, I don't think anybody is gonna be asking you to move, which could be an excellent thing. But there's plenty of room back here for a couple of bags if you're going away for a trip or a long weekend, camera equipment, just in case you're shooting a car video. All right, tomorrow's a big day. So time to eat, relax. Okay, relaxation over. Let's really drive this thing already. 
As I mentioned when we started this whole shebang, the new Z gets its power from the very excellent 3-liter twin-turbo V6 that powers the Infiniti Q50 and Q60 Red Sport models. Even though this iteration of the Z is heavier to the tune of about 180 pounds, this twin turbo engine makes you forget that fact pretty quickly. It's very energetic and lively. It really wants to go. Um, I will also say that the throttle on this is very excitable. Right at tip in, you just feel it do its thing. It's ready for action, uh, which when you're driving really quickly and carving around mountain roads like I am right now, that's exactly what you want. When you are trying to be smooth on a slower road, um, it makes it a little bit difficult. It's a little gung-ho, but hey, you know what? Let's have it for driving in excited roads, please. The brakes feel good. This car I'm driving has the performance brakes with red calipers, and they are quite grabby, which is great when you're out here doing some real driving. But in regular commuting, it might take a little bit of adjusting to the pedal feel. I will also preface all of this by saying that this is a pre-production model, so things might change slightly when we get into production. When anyone talks about the Z being all new, while they might be correct in a lot of elements of this car, the chassis that the Z rides on is the same as the previous model. There have been some changes made, it's been reinforced for more torsional stiffness, but that's only been improved by 11%. Rigidity is improved by almost 24%. That's a more significant number. Nissan has tweaked the geometry in the front end, giving you a little bit more positive caster, which helps with stability when you're going at speed in a straight line. I definitely feel more stable than in the 370. The same thing with the steering. They tweaked it just a little bit. It's a little stiffer now. It's more precise. You really do not need to put in a ton of input to get where you're going. There's much parity in the suspension setup as well, with a control arm front and multi-link rear suspension. That front upper control arm gives it that increased caster, and there are now monotube dampers instead of twin tubes. But everything else remains the same, so you're not going to see a whole lot of difference in driving when at the Z's limits, or at least as far as I could take it. I'm driving the Z Performance, which has a sport tuned suspension, and in my opinion, I don't necessarily think that it goes quite far enough. Right now I'm driving on a very smooth road, and that's great, but if I do happen upon a bump, it feels like it could be a little bit firmer to me. I do think that could be solved with maybe a Sport Plus mode that really ratchets things up a little bit more, but it just doesn't exist here. The other thing that I think Nissan could have done is, I don't know, maybe put on a better tire. To that end, I do think that they've left this car a little bit of a blank slate for people who absolutely want to just, I mean, go crazy in the aftermarket. The only thing is, is for people who don't want to do that, they might feel that element of it just a little bit lacking. But never fear, Nissan has left the door open for a racier Nismo Z, which could dial everything up to 11. When it comes to balance, I think the Z does a nice job around turns, especially if you're not really pushing the car super hard, which unless you're tracking it a lot, you likely won't be doing. You do get different drive modes on the automatic model, but nothing customizable like you get on the new Honda Civic Type R now. I really like the feel of the clutch. I like the release point. It doesn't feel too stiff, too heavy. I think it's absolutely perfect. As for the shifter, I think it's pretty good. Um, I think when you are shifting at slower speeds, uh, it's really, it's, it's very easy. When you quicken things up a little bit, it does get a, not as smooth as I would probably like it to be. Um, but you know what? I'm so used to driving manual transmission cars that are old and you have to be either really delicate with them or really forceful with them. So driving a modern manual transmission car is just a pleasure across the board. So I'm not gonna make many complaints. There's a no lift shifting mode on the manual performance model, which basically acts like a launch control and will help you get that zero to 60 time down. That's a first for Nissan and it's a very cool feature. The Mazda MX-5, Honda Civic Si and Type R, Subaru WRX and BRZ, the Toyota Corolla GR, and the Volkswagen Golf GTI and R all still contribute to the manual transmission club. 
Where does this one rank for me when it comes to rowing? Well, I haven't gotten in the Corolla GR yet, but I'd say the gearbox on Nissan Z feels mid-pack to me. Let's not forget that the Supra is also getting a manual as well. Yes, some of the cars on that list are coming in at about $10,000 more than the Z. Um, but you know what? I'm including them anyway just because, listen, right now, if you're an enthusiast and you love to drive, this is a pretty good time to be alive. But you know what? I've been doing a lot of driving and I'm hungry, so it's time for lunch. While I'm noshing on fish tacos, here's a page of fuel economy numbers which look fairly predictable with the automatic doing a little bit better, especially on the highway number. Just a note, the Supra does do better with both four and six cylinder cars. It's also worth noting that the best performance times clocked by Nissan come with adding 93 octane gas, which isn't even an option here in California. So that's a consideration, especially if fuel prices are high. When it comes to design and style, there is no doubt in my mind that Nissan has created a 100% looker. On this entire drive, people have been waving and taking pictures, and that's not at me. That's 100% because of this car, especially in this red. I really appreciate how Nissan has put together a lot of different heritage elements that all work really, really well together, while still leaving it a little bit of a blank canvas so you can do whatever you want with it. Well done, Nissan, for making another really great driver's car option. The only thing they're missing? Louvers for the rear window. Let's go, aftermarket guys. Get on those stats. There's so much to be excited about with the Nissan Z. From the manual transmission, to the exciting engine, to the spectacular design. Nissan has really done a great job bringing this car into the modern age. They've really put together something that the enthusiasts are going to love making their own.